Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Lord lifts up those who are bound down. Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them, who keeps promises forever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed, and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. The Lord lifts up those who A reading from James. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another, so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks. All right. Are there any children that would like to help with the road to Bethlehem today? Right here. All right. All right, and Jacob's coming up too. All right, we have some 
very important characters in the Christmas story, right? Do you guys know any of the names of the characters in the Christmas story? Or any of the animals? Reindeer. What's that? Reindeer. Reindeer? No, not a reindeer. But we have a camel, and he's got to go up there somewhere. And a donkey. Jacob, you want to put up the donkey? Right there, okay. Whoop. We'll get that guy up there. Let's see, there are some more animals in the Christmas story. You got to go on a sticky one there, Jacob. Which one is going to go on? On that one? Okay, we'll get that one on there, okay. There's some more animals that are in the Christmas story. What are these called? Sheep. Sheep, and sheep need shepherds, right? So we better have a shepherd on there. Here you go. There, good job, you guys. And I suppose we should have an angel, huh? Jacob, do you want to put up the angel? Way up high. Okay, we'll put him way up high. Way up there. How's that? Okay, and Mary? Mary? We have to have Mary. And how about Joseph? Should we get Joseph out here? Where is he? You want to do Joseph, Jacob? There you go. Down there next to Mary somewhere? That'd be a good idea. All right. Oh, we have one more sheep here. Can't leave him behind. And what do we have here? What do we have here? A star. Where does this star go, Jacob? Way up high. Way up high. Way up high. Way up there. Okay. All right, one more. Prophet. The prophet shows us the way. Way up there. All right. Good job, you guys. Thanks for coming up today. All right, let's rise for the gun. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? Oh, excuse me. Wrong paragraph. Start again. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this season of anticipation 
as we await once again the coming of the one who is the light of the world. The coming of the one who leads us ever into the way of life and hope and joy. And we pray in this season we might be those who reflect this one. We might be those who give hope and joy to others as well. So speak to us now through your word. Encourage us and strengthen us for the call that is ours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dearly beloved of God, imagine, if you will, that you are this holiday season expecting someone very special who is coming. And it is your job to fetch them at the airport. And so there you are, plenty early, car parked, you're standing outside the security area waiting for your special one to arrive. And all sorts of people, scores of people, maybe even hundreds of people come at you. The business folk in their suits and shiny shoes and the college students in their backpacks and wearing sneakers and the elderly with their canes and walkers and they all flood by you and you ignore them all because you are waiting, you are waiting for someone very particular, someone you have been waiting for for a long time. Now imagine how weird it would be if this year, when you went, up to, went, went to pick up that special someone at the airport, you decided that maybe this year you would just get someone a little more suitable. You know, grandma can be a little grumbly sometime, so you decided maybe you'd pick up a grandma who looked a little more jovial. And your grandchildren have some poor manners, so you thought maybe this year you'd get some children who are a little more well-behaved. You know, wouldn't that be weird? Especially for those folks <laughs> that you picked up. It reminds me of what happened to a good friend of mine. He was at a concert and he thought he spied a colleague of his who had his back to him. And he went up and he reached around this fellow's shoulder and pulled on his beard and said, nice beard, Gary. And the man turned around and it wasn't Gary. <laughs> this is all to say that identity matters, doesn't it? It really does. It matters who a person is. We aren't quite interchangeable. We all have similar appendages and attributes, but we all are very unique and very different. Identity matters. Well, this was, at, was it, what was at stake when John the Baptist sent word by his disciples to Jesus saying, are you the one for whom we have waited? Or shall we wait for another? Are you that special one for whom we have waited? John wanted to know the identity of Jesus because he knew that identity matters. Perhaps you remember how John described Jesus in last week's gospel, he said, one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. That is what John had said. But now months later, as he sat in prison, perhaps John wondered. 
He wondered about what he had been told concerning the identity of Jesus. He'd been told that Jesus would come with power, that Jesus would have great stature, that Jesus would be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. But now, months later, sitting in prison, perhaps discouraged, very much out of the public view, he wondered, are you the one for whom we have waited? Are you the promised Messiah? Are you the one that Israel has waited so long for? And so he sent word to the disciples saying, are you the one or shall we wait for another? It seems to me that this is a question which many people are asking today. You've undoubtedly noted that many, many people are not connected with the faith community anymore. Some have grown up in the church, some have not. But people are asking, people are asking, they are observing people of faith, faith communities, leaders of faith communities, and they say, are you are you the ones for whom we have waited? Are you, are you those who identify as the body of Christ? Are you those, those, those ones? Those Jesus people, are you them? You see, they hear lots of different messages about who we are. Lots of conflicting messages. Some faith communities seem to believe that God has called them to judge others with some regularity, and others seem like they think that's God's business. Some faith communities seem to equip all believers to be leaders, and others seem quite certain that only some are called to that role. Some seem to encourage all their people to be involved in the well-being of the neighborhood and the community, and others think that that's other people's task. Some faith communities spend a lot of time listening and others a lot of time talking. Some spend a lot of money on others and some spend a lot on themselves. Some say that God wants you rich. Some say you are already rich in Christ. Some say that God wants all people to be saved and come to know the truth. And others say that, well, no, God has decided who shall be saved and who shall not. And so it goes. Many, many different messages. So many different voices. It is no wonder that people look at the body of Christ and they wonder, are you... Are you the ones to whom we should look? Are you the ones for whom we have waited? Are you the ones who follow this Jesus? And to this question, Jesus has an answer in today's gospel. He says, go and tell what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. Did you notice who it is that Jesus says will be the primary evidence of his identity? It is the status of the blind and the lame and the lepers, and the deaf, and the dead, and the poor, they will tell of the identity of Christ. Are the blind given sight? Are the lame leaping about? Are the lepers being cleansed and the deaf hearing? 
and the dead raised and the poor having good news preached to them, if they are, then there is evidence that Christ is present. And so it is with us, you see. So it is with us. Lenny Duncan, an ELCA pastor and author in his recent most provocative book called Dear Church, writes this. You, dear church, are the answer to the question, is God real? You are the resounding yes thundering in our hearts. You are the triumphant roar affirming that God is real, powerful, and still able to perform miracles here and now. In this time in our history, when the world seems like it is on the precipice, you are the gentle hymn that will pull us back from the abyss. You, church, are the resounding call that the entire world is bending its ear to hear as the first straining notes float over the mountain top. I love that phrase. You, church, are the resounding call that the entire world is bending its ear to hear. I believe that's true. I believe that the entire world is bending its ear to hear of an authentic Jesus and an authentic Jesus people. You know, we sometimes wonder if our work is in vain. Our work of advocacy for those who have insufficient means to live. Our increasing solidarity with marginalized groups in our culture. Our interest in and support of those who are incarcerated. Our feeding of the hungry and housing of the homeless. Our raising funds for a building in a remote village in Tanzania. We wonder, does it really finally matter? The answer, of course, is yes. Especially to those who we minister to. But more than that, it matters because the world is watching. The world is watching and asking, is this the one for whom we've waited? Is this truly a people who follows the Christ, who knows the way of love? Are these the ones for whom we have waited? Or shall we seek another? You see, every time, every time you do an act of mercy and compassion, every time you bring a bag of groceries for Channel One, every time you house a homeless family, every time you send a gift to our partners in ministry in Colombia and Tanzania, You answer the question, this is the one for whom we have waited. These are the people who follow the Christ. And he is Christ indeed. Luther said that we are to be little Christs for the world. Christ is the light of the world and we hold a candle of that light. 
we reflect that light. And the world looks and it sees us and it sees Jesus. It's kind of hard to believe, but the identity of the Christ is only made clear through us. Jesus is the one for whom we have waited, for whom the world is waiting. Jesus is the one. Thanks be to God. Amen.